this video, we're looking at comparing two population proportions again, but now we're considering how we would do that when using a hypothesis test. So let's talk about the kind of um, initial phase of the problem that we would have to encounter. When you read the problem, you would know it's a hypothesis test about proportions when they mention something about a rate, a percentage, or a proportion. So let's give a, a made up example here. What if I said I believe that the proportion of divorces or the rate of divorce in the United States, the U.S., is greater than the proportion of divorces in Canada. Okay, so the proportion in the U.S. is greater than that in Canada. Well, this would be your claim, right? Your claim in symbols, and that's our step one always when we do a hypothesis test to identify the claim. Then from there, we have a step two. So we're going to just walk through the seven steps to show that it's not much different from what we did with means, right? In step two, we're going to be looking at the null hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis. It's pretty much the same as we've done before. Of course, the symbols are different. Remember, rho, the population symbol for the proportion, um, looks obviously different than the mu symbol we use for the mean. All right, HO is going to be rho for US, rho for Canada, right? But we have to change the symbol because we know that this symbol greater than is the symbol we use in the alternative hypothesis. So we're going to have to do the opposite of that then for the null. So if you're not greater than, it would be that it's less than or equal to, right? And then that'll be rho for US is greater than rho for Canada for the alternative hypothesis. Okay, so in this case, the alternative and the claim are the same. All right, then we have our step three of the problem. Our step three in the problem would be a data step, right? So we collect all the data. So remember, nothing really changes in terms of the overall structure. We still have to collect data to test our hypothesis. And we're going to have two sets of data, right? We will have, again, a sample size provided. We will have, for, the, for each one, so we'll say a sample size for the US, a sample size derived from Canada, right? So we look at um, you know marriages in each country. Then we would have X, which is the number of marriages, let's say, that ended in divorce for the U.S. out of that total. And then we'd have X for the Canadian sample, right? Again, would be the number of marriages that ended in divorce. And then, of course, from there, we would calculate our P hats, right, for each group. The P hat for Canada and the P hat for the U.S. Okay, so that's just an example of the kind of data we would collect. And as always, we always have a significance level alpha in the problems, right? If it's not given, we use 5%, but we'll also have an alpha. So this is the kind of information that we will collect for the problem. All right, now from there, um, what we want to do is to actually take that information and now apply it to a test statistic. This is where the kind of technical part of the procedure comes in. You know, what's our test stat formula? What's the one that we should use to test this particular set of hypotheses? Well, the procedure actually is going to have a Z distribution, much like our confidence interval had a Z distribution. In other words, we're going to use the normal approximation. Of course, you know the distributions of each of these is binomial in nature, but we're going to use a normal approximation procedure. And the point estimate that we're going to look at, the point estimator to compare these two things, is going to be the difference between the sample proportions. So in other words, I'll probably do P hat for the US minus P hat for Canada. So I will subtract those two. Now, we could also, if we wanted to specify a specific difference between the two countries' divorce rates, we could do that. And we, we could tap on an extra term, minus D sub zero to the formula. Um, we're just going to keep it simple because most of the problems don't do that. Most of the problems do not give you a specific difference. So we're just going to do a direct comparison. The P hat for the US versus the P hat for Canada. The divorce rate for the U.S. minus the divorce rate for Canada. And use that as our test statistic and use that top part as our point estimator of the true difference between um, the U.S. rate and the Canadian rate. From there, we're going to divide this by the standard error for our estimators. It turns out that uh, we have a special technical consideration to consider here that we didn't have in confidence intervals per se. When we do hypothesis tests and we assume HO to be true, and because we assume HO to be true, um, remember, we, we look at the worst case scenario, so we basically test the idea that these two are identical. So remember, the HO has a whole set of possibilities. It says basically either the U.S. and Can Canadian rate is the same, or it says that the U.S. rate is less than Canada, 
So we have all the different possibilities. For example, the U.S. rate could be as low as zero. There could be no divorces, and all the way up to Canada's rate under this hypothesis, right? So we're going to take the hardest scenario to distinguish between, which would be the scenario where the U.S. and the Canadian rate were the same. If that was the case, it would be the hardest scenario for us to test because we would have a hard time distinguishing between HO and HA under that condition. We spoke about this earlier in another video on hypothesis testing. So either way, we will assume that for the purposes of this test, that the U.S. rate is the same as the Canadian rate, we will assume that that's true. If that is true, if they have the same rate, then we should pool the sample proportions together to form a pooled estimate of the true proportion. Right? Because we believe they're the same under HO, if that's what we're testing, so we're using that assumption. Then under here, rather than use the p hat q hat over n, p hat q hat over n that we used before, for the confidence interval, we should instead use a pooled estimator. What I mean by that is essentially this. We're going to come up with our p hat of the pooled estimator by doing this. We're going to do x1 plus x2. In this specific case, it'll be x for the US, x for Canada, divided by n1 plus n2. In this case, it'd be the sample size for the US study, the sample size for the Canadian study. Add them together, and we'll get a joint estimate a pooled estimate for the sample proportion. And then, of course, we'll have a q-hat that can come from that as well. The q-hat would be just the complement, or 1 minus p-hat, that sample uh, pooled proportion. Okay, so that's what we essentially do here. And what you could then use is this, then. You can use p-hat, q-hat over n1 plus, so in this case, n us, right? And then p-hat, q-hat over n for Canada, right? The p hat and the q hat being the same there for both because we're going to use this pooled set of estimators. So that's a fairly difficult um, thing to remember, but just remember that under HO we're going to assume that they are the same and if that's the case we should pool this estimator. Kind of like we did when we did the independent t-test and we assumed the variations were the same, we found a pooled estimate of the, of the, uh, the variation. So it's the same kind of thing, we're going to do that here with the sample proportion instead. Okay, so once we have that, that's our test that formula. It's going to give us a normal, and all the calculation aside, it's going to give us a normal z-score number, right? So something like, you know, 1.28 or 4.6 or anything, right? But something that's a z-score. And then once we have that, we want to compare it to a critical value. So that'll be our next step. Just to save room, I'm going to erase this. And let's go ahead and put in then the critical value, right? So that'll be our step five. Okay, so in step five, we determine the critical value. Remember, the critical value is the same as it's always been for us when we have a z-test. We're going to look at the HA. In this case, we'd have a right tail test. We'll look up the alpha value, whatever that turns out to be, in a one-tailed right tail test scenario. Get the critical z-value from either our z-chart or the bottom of our t-chart, and that's the critical value we'll compare our test stat against. Once we do that, we do our step six, which is going to be the initial conclusion. And from the initial conclusion, we will then word our final conclusion. So steps five, six, and seven really don't change in any meaningful way, right? Even though we have um, a new test stat, we don't really realize that when we're doing five, six, and seven. This test stat could have come from anywhere. By the time we calculate it, it's just a number, and we use it to complete the last three steps of the procedure. So the main changes, notation here, right? We don't use the mu symbols. We use the rho symbols for proportions. Um, we have a different set of data that will come with the problem as a result of that, a different test stat formula, everything after that pretty much remains the same. So I think if you were able to do hypothesis testing in the past, this shouldn't be too much more difficult. Just remember where we get this uh, p hat, q hat pair from, right? Remember that under HO, it's going to be x1 plus x2, n1 plus n2. That's how we get the p hat. And then to get the q hat, you just do 1 minus that.